Okay, 15, 21, and 12. I'm going to use a tape measure along with this. This is a straight edge, and it's also numbered. Let me see if I can't get this to zoom. Okay, get it to zoom a bit. I wish I could do this without being on, but it doesn't allow me to do that unless I'm recording. All right, there we go. All right, now you can see the numbers. All right, I'll show you them in up close and personal in a minute. So, now, this is what I'm going to do. This is 15. At this point, I'm going to take my measuring tape. All right, so this one's already marked out. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to butt this tape measure right out with my pencil mark at 15. I'm going to bring this out past my drywall. Okay, and then I'm going to come down here to 21. All right, 21 is right here at this point. All right, then my leftover is 12. All right, and if you add 15, 21, and 12, you will have four feet. Now, I will show you what's on this tape measure. Okay, on this tape measure. Okay, now see this has numbers, and that's how we know, all right? And this is a straight edge. Um, it makes for quick, easy numbering. Right now, all I got to do is take this here, all right? Now I'm going to bring this. Let's show you this pencil mark right here up close and personal. There's my pencil mark, all right? So I'm gonna slide this right here to the pencil mark. All right? Now I'm gonna hold this down. I'll show you something else in one second. I'm holding this in place with my foot. Now what I need to do is drill a hole into this so that I could then tap and have several holes scattered where I could just tap a screw right into it or screw a screw into it or nail then it holds this side straight for me and eat, or you just hold it with your foot all right now coming back here got my pencil line okay there's the pencil line bring this so that you bring it right up against your pencil line where you can see it it's just at the outer edge of your straight edge okay bring it down tight then we'll, we will cut all right, you want to turn here. You're going to have a slight turn towards your edge with the blade, and you just come across. All right, we're going to continue to cut. Okay, right there in front of that edge, this straight edge. All right, now yeah, let's cut. Turn it slightly in towards it. I'm having hands at an angle. All right, this is straight up. I'm at a slight angle. Okay, you want to hold this down and cut. All right, we'll continue to cut. Cut's complete. These are worth having. You can use a piece of one by a two by four. One by is best. You can use a level, um, but that makes it really nice. If you use a level, you'd mark this end. You'd mark the other edge, and you line it up the same way, and you'd hold it in place, and cut if you had a level or a piece of one by. Okay? You'd mark each, you'd mark each edge, left and right side, if you were using just a level or a piece of one by or something like that for a straight edge to cut. Okay, now I've got it cut. Now I'm going to come right here to where it's at the other side. I'm going to put my knee in this, and I'm going to bend it now okay next next edge all right that's standing alone all right you can see that it's bent maybe not but you're going to see this one right here all right okay now watch this side bam there it is okay so let's see what that looks like now from the top view you can see 
Alright, this runs off at an angle. Alright, there's the joint coming across. Okay, there's your second joint. So I've got three pieces now. One, the center here, and then here on the side. Alright. There we go, there's my third piece there. Okay, now let's take it in and do I'll show you how I'll cut it. Alright, let's let, let's get this cut. I want you to see this cut. You may already know, but you cut it from the back side, alright? And you cut right into the joint, alright? Start down here at the bottom, go right into the joint, cut it straight, and just bring it on up. Bam, one and done. Okay. And that's how that's done. Just like that. For your viewing pleasure, we will do it again. There we go. There's a joint. Okay, I wish I could zoom out, but it's stuck. Let's see if I can zoom out. No, didn't really zoom out. So here we go. Let's get this cut. No further ado. Keep it, keep it folded. Come in here. Cut the, and we're cutting the back side. Done. Okay, now. Okay, here's the area I have to cover. It's another cut right there all the way to the floor, all the way up to the ceiling. Then I've got to go into here and you see my plumbing. All right. Because of the angles on the plumbing, all right, I'd have to cut a great big hole into my drywall in order to fit this drain pipe and that drain pipe. So I have to cut it in two pieces and that's what I've done. Then I've had to cut for this here as well, all right, so that's the three pieces. Unfortunately, that's what I've had to do. And all this will be hid basically by the cabinet, by the tile, uh, splash, all right? So, not too bad. It works out really well. Okay, this is a furring strip, all right? And it goes on the stud, all right? Now, the reason you use these, for those that don't know, all right, is... In the situation I'm dealing with here, I am. This is three quarter inch drywall. All right, and if I was to put this half inch drywall on it, okay, it's setting below the edge, and you'd end up having to use a 12 inch broad knife, a 16 inch, and do this great big fill in here with thin set, not thin set, with drywall mud. All right, to make it look smooth and straight so you don't have the slug dropping off at an angle, right? And it just looks ugly. So to prevent that, you can you, you take a, a nail gun, a finished nail gun, or a stapled gun, better yet, and then shoot it right into the studs and then put up your drywall and it levels it out, okay? For example, see this is now smooth. If this isn't there, and now it sets back, okay, and I, and I and you hit the edge, okay. So this takes care of that. Saves you a whole lot of work. Um, this is an older house built in the 80s, and uh, they used three quarter inch back when drywall was much cheaper. All right, so no further ado. I prefer to use this nail stapler. These are the staples, all right? And this is a Harbor Freight brand, all right? Just drop these staples right in. Bam, ready to go, all right? Okay, let's show you how this works. This is why I like using the stapler. If you don't have a stapler, you've got to hold your gun just back a little bit off your paper and pull in on your safety here and then shoot. Uh, staplers make it much more, much easier, quick and easy. 
you just bam, bam, done. All right. Next spurring strip. Center it with the two by four. You can be off a little, but you know, practice. Just make it right to start with. Done. All right. All the way done. Okay. All right. I got to change gears a little bit for a minute. And while I'm changing gears here, I will introduce something to you that you may not even know about. And if you do, well, bear with me. For those that don't know about this tool, we'll be glad to have learned about it. This right here is known in the construction world to the carpenters as a cat's paw here in California. All right, but this is what it looks like. You can get this at the big box stores or any, or any hardware, all right? Now, this cat's paw is great. It will dig into the wood, get behind. This is designed for getting behind a nail, for turning, and leveraging it out of there. All right, so we're going to demonstrate this in one second. All right, now I have a nail, drywall nail, right here. All right. If I try to get in there with this hammer, the hammer handle is hitting the wall over here. See, it's on the wall, and I'm going to fight this thing. If I try to get it in here, you know, at an angle, maybe. But let's just take the, the fight out of the job, and let's simplify the process a bit. And uh, let's take this cat's paw, get it right around that nail head, tap it in with the hammer, and then carefully pull out so I don't catch my drywall here, the joint joining drywall. Then I can turn this and then just pull that nail right on out of there. Well, let's do it again. I've got another one right up here. Then I can clean out the drywall in the joint because we don't want the drywall left behind. Okay, again. And now this I can just push it up in there, all right? And I just pull. Now if I have to, I can take my hammer. This will give me more leverage. Put it behind the claw, okay? And then just pull it together and pull this nail right on out of there, all right? Bam, done. Now, this part here, all right? Let's take this. Get it in there and just clean it out. All right. Now this here is a little bit more congested, but as you see, no problem. Okay. Now I've got a hidden nail right here. I'm going to come in here at an angle, and I'm going to pull that on out of there. All right. And that's how that works. Okay. Next, we'll be taking a measurement and getting this drywall fitted for around the plumbing. Now, you see this here, all right? My finger's fitting right into this, okay, which allows for this drywall to tuck in right behind it for a nice looking corner, all right? But we're still gonna have to mud and tape this corner, but that way it saves you less work and it's tied in right behind it and you can still drive a screw or a nail in here at an angle and flush it up. All right. Pro tip. All right. I need, I'm going to take the measurements for these, but I'm going to pull for something that's consistent. All right. The, the ground is high and lows, and I'm going to raise it off the ground so it's going to change. So to simplify it, all right. What's going to be consistent for me to pull from is I'm going to pull from this edge, all right, down to my hot and cold water lines coming out, all right. And then I'll pull from this drywall over and over again, and then I'll be right where I need to be. All right, I'm pulling. See the gap that's for you have space for the drywall to fit in there. Now we come over here, all right, we have six and a half 
And then we're gonna make this seven, all right? And a quarter, we're gonna give it a little space. So we're gonna bring it to right here by my thumbs to seven and a quarter. That gives me about an eighth inch of play on either side, over quarter inch overall. And then here on the second pipe, we're going to come in at 10. And then we're going to bring it out here to 10. All right. And three quarters right there. All right. And it'll be a little bit of play, roughly about a quarter inch of space there, which gives me an eighth on the left and right side for wiggle room. Now we're going to pull from the top down and we'll be good. All right. Now let's take these measurements. Okay, I'm gonna pull from here down to the bottom of this pipe. And the bottom of that pipe tells me it's two foot, 24 inches and a half. And the other side tells me it's 24 inches and a half. So then I'm gonna take my drywall all right, and I'm going to come over to my six and a half. Then I'm going to come over to my ten, then over to ten and three quarters, and over to seven and a quarter, and bam, we'll be dead center. All right, so. We have, what was the top number? Coming down, we have 24 and a half. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down to 24 and a half. I'm gonna draw a line straight across at 24. I'm gonna take it to the outer edge. 24 and a half, bam. I'm going to come over here to 24 and a half to this side. And I'm going to, you can take your tape measure. All right, let me see what you can see. Okay, let's get this down here where you can see what I'm doing. All right. Now, you can take your tape measure, hold it tight and still. Hook it, get the edge of your tape measure right on your pencil line, line it up, line up the, the, the left side and the right side right on the pencil lines, and scribe across. That's all you need. Now, all right, my measurement was six and a half. All right, so I come over here on my tape, I'm right on that pencil line, six and a half. All right, then it was seven and a quarter. All right, then this one was 10. And I'm going to double check. All right, 10. And 10 and a quarter. That's right. All right, 10 and 10 and a quarter. There's 10. Oh, not 10 and a quarter, 10 and three quarters. That's right. Here's my three quarter mark. Bam, there we are. And now I'm gonna show you a little shortcut for doing this. One second. As I prepare for what I'm doing next. All right. All right. These pipes, about a half inch. Now, so I'm gonna draw a circle. This is my line that I have drawn on the left and right side. And I come over here, and I come up, come down here, bam, now. Now, you can use a masonry bit, all right, because a masonry bit is not going to get dull on you. All right, I could use a paddle bit, but if I use 
my paddle bit, it's going to dull my paddle bit. So we don't want to do that. I'm going to use what I have on hand at the moment. And so I'm going to take my Phillips dr driver right here, all right? And I'm just going to come in there, punch a hole. Okay. Punch another hole. Come at the top. Come to the bottom. Okay, and then catch on this left and right side. Okay, let me show you what this looks like. Then I'm going to cut it. Alright, I'm hoping you can see this. I don't know if you can. Alright. So, let me make sure you can see exactly what we're talking about here. Alright. This is what I've just done. I've punched these holes. Then I'm going to take my drywall knife and I'm going to cut around those holes. I'll do the same over here. Alright? Alright, now. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this, this is a, is a rotozip, zip alright, bit. And so, this is the first time to do this. You can take your drywall knife and then cut around this. That sure makes it a whole lot easier. But let's see how this rotozip zip blade works in the drill. Bam, look at that. Nice. Okay, one more time. First time to do this. You're seeing it now. All right, this is a rotozip blade for cutting drywall. I mean drill bit. All right, quick and easy. Now, let's see if my measurements are on. Let's see if my measurements are correct. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Will it stay or will it go? All right, pull this plumbing out. See, there we go. Is it gonna work? All right, we have got it. All right, just a tad. Let's see. All right, wish I should have made this a little taller needs to be a little higher I, this is a little low but I can fill this in with drywall mud drywalling is real forgiving like that all right and I only got to come down a little bit okay we are all right need to come up about this much more okay I could put a straight edge on here. All right. So let's do this. Come up off of this edge right here and come up. And then we'll come across. And down. All right. There we go. It's bigger than what I wanted. But like I said, I can fill that in with drywall mud, a scushion goes over it, a beauty ring, and you'll never see it. Alright, let's take it from the other side now. A lot bigger than what I was wanting. But like I said, drywall is very forgiving. Alright. Get this tucked in behind, bring that on around, and bam, there we go. It's perfect. All right, let's, let's check out the joint. Okay. Up at the top. Fits in there like a glove. Look at that. Fits in like a glove. Okay, that'll work. 
So that's the end of this drywall. All right, now, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If you're still here and you followed me all the way through, I hope this was helpful and informative. If you have any questions, any, your own suggestions, I look forward to hear from you. But don't forget, easy two tips and tricks where you can see everything up close and personal. It's a channel that you know you can come to where you don't waste your time when you're looking to get something done. After 60 seconds, hit the like button. Share, comment, put in a playlist, ask questions. If you need some help, hit me up. I'm more than happy to, if I can give you the information you need to get your job done, I look forward to it. So remember, easy to tips and tricks, etc. That is E-C-T. Easy to tips and tricks, E-C-T. And as always, never give up because there's always a way. Always. We just have to find out what that way is. I look forward to hearing from you. So God bless. Bye for now. And we'll catch you on the rebound. Now. Okay, one second everybody. If you're still here, stay tuned. I'm going to show you a pro tip. Something that I do, I have never seen anybody else do, and I'm going to share that with you. Pro tip. Here we go. I've never seen anybody do this. Necessity is a mother of invention. You're trying to hold a piece of drywall, you need to stay straight. You're in a precarious situation or whatever. Bring it up. Make the adjustment you want. Okay. Now, shoot it in. Bam. 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 And so on. There it is. Now, one moment. One moment. All right, now, I'm going to put screws in that piece of drywall. I have taken small pieces for a patch that I've done that with, but I'm still going to put a couple screws in it. This, I'm still going to screw it as if there was no screws in it that holds it in place, it gets it right where you need it to be without it moving on you and you don't have to fight it. That's the only purpose of this. Please don't use these staples or nails when you're doing somebody's house thinking you're taking a shortcut. It's going to come back and bite you because it's not going to last. So I'm not showing you that so you can cheat and take a shortcut and do a bad job on someone's house. But for holding your material till you get it in place and you need it right where you want it. Great. And if you're putting in a small piece, you're doing good. You still throw in a couple nails. It's a couple screws, you know? All right. So I'm out of here. Take care and never give up because there's always a way. Always. Remember, easy two tips and tricks, etc. This is a pro, pro tip. See you on the next one. United we stand and united we make it happen here on YouTube.